Nope. I once spent like 45 minutes at a comic shop just trying to figure out which dice I wanted. It's tough to say. My... And they're great. I I love why them. I they're have my... like 30 pairs of dice. They're my thir first set of dice. They needed to be the right ones. That's right. Get to the job. <laughs> oh, no, Chris, you're taking off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. All right. Well, welcome back to the epilogue. Um, so I thought this was kind of cool because I'm a nerd and I drew out you guys' adventure on the Pazubia map for the background. Mm. It's like, all over the place. It's like an Indiana Jones map. Yeah. Yeah. Dotted lines were like teleportation and small dotted lines were you know underneath but what's in the bottom right corner what's happening over there that's uh that's pus. and oh, the, oh, 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 the oh, we kind of circled oh, around you, it a few times yeah you guys went back a couple times teleported <laughs> out of it Ooh, that's a good color oh that's yeah it's a it's a deep purple one Five purple. Pull up, Boom. Ooh, whoa oh <laughs> so now you need to remember that code so that next time you just yeah, type right. it in Write that shit you have down. to type it in every time? No, no, well, no. Well, no, 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 but uh, <clears throat> next time you, like, if when we start a new campaign, it's not going to remember. Mm -mm. Oh, shoot. Yeah, so write that write that down. Gotta, uh, I need a DD and d journal. Oh, my God. I have, like, 12. I mean, just <laughs> one. I just I, use one, guys. It's, it's fine. I had one. I lost it. That's why I haven't remembered anything for the last two and a half years. <laughs> I probably have like 30 notebooks that all have 10 pages filled in in the front. <laughs> Just in the front? <laughs> Just in the front. So that I have like, sounds about right. Like 95% perfectly usable notebooks, right? It's, it's cool. I got a post it note. That'll work. There you That's go. That's good. That's good. Uh, so, um, you find yourselves uh, roughly one year later after, you know, coming out of the crypt uh, exhausted. Um, you have a brief conversation with Twilina and discover that, you know, her forces have been kind of dwindled down from you know, some massive, um, men on horses. Um, one in which you, you remember, uh, newly kind of describing, well, technically it'd be Valoran describing, um, which dwindled her forces down to 50, um. You know, and, and, you know, peace had kind of come to the land. The storm had kind of passed. Uh, the, the weather has faded. Um, within that year, uh, up until the present dates, uh, since uh, what is now being referred to as the Days of Darkness, um, it, you find yourself on the essential one-year mark. Um, during a time where it's it's good to reflect and, and remember, you know, those who have come and gone, uh, ancestors, those lost, um, you know, during mourning. Uh, I cued that music perfectly. Um, and, and just kind of reflect on where you've been uh, and, and kind of where your journeys have taken you. Um, Sisa is in the middle of recovery uh, with the help of uh, Chancellor Nororis and her sister, Queen Twilina. They've been rebuilding Sisa. Um, you know, the capital of Pazubia, which is now uh, a republic since the, the king itself has passed. Um, a couple of, you know, things like the wizard col uh, college is beginning to look for a new headmaster. Um, as uh, Zazuth is, is slowly stepping down. The arena was never repaired. Um, Basewind has worked uh, relentlessly uh, in the city of Sisa to repair not only the Temple of Pelor but all of the other surrounding temples as well. Uh, and even the somewhat selfish uh, Lord Sylvester from Torsindio has uh, kind of joined the repairing and um, has donated some funds. Um, some of, um, well, the rest of the uh, uh, House Vandegar has been kind of uh, recovered in one way or another. Um, and um, yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, I'm kind of curious to know what what everyone has kind of uh, done in their free time, and then I have uh, what Frederick has done as well um, during that time. So, anyone want to share what they're currently up to? I'll go. Uh, first, first things first. Go ahead, you guys. Andy. 
Sorry. What? I was just telling you to go. Thanks. <laughs> Did you want to go? No, 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 no. Go. <laughs> My mic was muted, so I got in late. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> All I heard was go ahead, Andy. <laughs> Were you try also trying to talk? I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, so, um, I had I had written notes a long time ago because I, I I really wasn't sure if if uh, Valoran was going to die. So, there's a bunch of notes in the party sheet. I, I also copied them into uh, uh, what's it called into Discord. If you just want to read them there, but I read, I read my note. Nice. Uh, yeah, I saw were, mine today. There were a bunch there. Uh, so yeah, she'll she'll uh, start out by keeping her, um, you know, keep her promises and always and always kind of be available for her allies and friends when they need her, uh, and probably spend spend some time at the beginning, uh, just sort of doing the things uh, that she was she brought up in those notes. Um. Probably the first thing, uh, well, if if she thought nobody like good enough was trying to be the headmaster at the academy, she would do that. And I'm assuming Abe that no one else that she thinks is cool enough is going to do that. Uh, no, there's there's no one good candidate. There's some some individuals that you feel could take it, but they're not they're not very so she- learned. Sure. So she'll do that or whatever. Uh, how? So basically, she's kind of hoping to change the, the direction of the academy a little bit and make the next next layer of next generation of spellcasters kind of more ready for real problems and not just like what you can learn in books, that kind of thing. Uh, however, she has a lot of things to do, and she can't afford to be only in one place. So she creates. Get to the chopper! <laughs> Get down! Uh, so she creates another Valorin. Uh, so there's now two Valorins in the world. Creepy. That's Rachel says that's creepy. That's creepy. I don't uh, like it. Can we tell the difference between the yeah, two? Yeah, do they have similar personalities, or does one have like a? I don't know. Does so, one have like green hair? And <laughs> they're like they're exactly ball. the same. One is a magical simulacrum that has all of her powers, memories, attitude, and she basically leaves the simulacrum to run things at the academy while she goes out and does like what she considers real shit. Uh, so. Meanwhile, she has a long list of things that she wants to do. First on her list is she grows a clone of herself. Because uh, that's a thing like she can do. That's a thing she can do. Duplicate yourself, uh, grow a clone. Done. She, she makes a simulacrum of herself and she grows a clone. The clone is dormant in a secret demiplane uh, with a little chest with all the basic necessities. Should she ever die, if she ever gets killed, she will uh, her soul will get put into the clone and she'll have like some basics like food, clothes, and a spell book there, ready to go. Because uh, in the back of her mind, she's thinking about a Rakshasa coming up someday. Rakshasa! Yep. Uh, second on the list, she wants to put protection spells over Pazubia, starting with Sisa. So she's going to get it together like some wizards that she knows, like Zazuth, Zeno, Twilina, Nororis, and the like, and... Uh, Kind of form a brain trust to try to figure out how they can make like the world's biggest arcane circle. Uh, and it would be kind of the thing. Her plan is to do it so that uh, from the ground, it just looks like there are sort of random giant runes situated on the streets or on buildings or on walls. But if you look at it from above, it actually forms like this big protective circle over the entire city of Sisa. So it is a huge protective circle. So she's going to work on that. Uh, and then she's just going to make like a home for herself. Like a little like extra dimensional home. Like a library. A little place to live. Maybe a prison. You know, in case we run into anyone bad that needs to be like put away forever. 
She's a little worried that the wand of Orcus disappeared, and so she kind of wants to be prepared the next time that happens. So she's going to make a little, like, prison holding area. So in case anything terrible pops up, you know, we can have a place, safe place to put it. Uh, and lastly, she... I would say with all this, she probably doesn't have a lot of time to pursue her own, like, personal desires. Uh, <laughs> Nororis. Uh... She has learned over her journeys that she is not uh, so much defined by her romantic interests. So she's kind of like, as far as that goes, she's happy to kind of maintain a relationship with Nororis if it works out. But she also knows like they're both important people and they got important jobs and responsibilities. So if they're kind of happy to spend the time together that they have together, then great. And if it doesn't work out, I think Valorant's okay with that too. And that's Valorant. Nice. <laughs> she's gonna be like Doctor Strange. That's she's gonna be Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. I got my notes. That's the plan. Like a Doctor Strange. Um, with, with a goatee. Since I already, I, I just pulled it up. I, I wasn't. Um, Fred's is here. Let me just give you Fred's. Um, I'm gonna read this as he typed it. Um, so Fred continues his druid studies, but remains distant by uh, distracted by questioning uh, questions regarding his parents. His age being slowed through druid magic, he spends some time reflecting, taking on various forms of animals. Fred often revisits the ruined areas remembered, uh, remembering his times in battle, and even more so his friends with the former uh, his friendship with the former arena champion uh, Murin. These were happy days, though he now realizes the shouts of the arena and the pains from the fights were meant to drown out the true question about his real meaning. Similarly, he revisits the cleric temple where he studied. He always felt out of place at the temple, but now he appreciates how his fellow clerics served as a family in his early years. The Radiant Company felt like a family to Fred as well, although their acceptance, challenges, and teamwork made the void of not knowing his true family or parents all more the painful. So Fred has Fred has become withdrawn from the Radiant Company, seeking an audience with his memories and ultimately with nature. In the moments not in Sisa, Fred transforms from solemn uh, to solemn reflect to a beast uh, like wildness, running through the woods, howling, screaming out for answers with hopes that he will learn who he truly is and why he was abandoned all those years ago. Fred has not assumed the form of a human in more than three months. Uh, every week, less time spent reflecting and more is spent in his fits of wild. Fred may have, in a way, um, Fred may have, in a feeble way, helped stop Orcus, but he's still losing a battle to find out who he truly is. So there you go. There's Fred. Shit, oh, he's got really a real feral. It's <laughs> really sad. Dark. <laughs> Ooh. Poor Fred. I find out you're a demigod. It's. <laughs> Jeez. I kind of want to go on a quest to give Fred a good day. Yes, <laughs> let's go find Fred. Get a new buddy. Take him to get ice cream or something, you know? <laughs> Maybe, like, de hulk yourself well. and be a person for a minute and let's have some tea. Jeez, oh, man. Eric, what have you been doing? I've been feeding this right. dog in the woods. <laughs> he, he howls at night. He just seems familiar. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go. I have mine queued up. And feel free to retcon this, any anybody. But um, after the events that take place, you should go. Uh, th <laughs> thanks, <Andy. laughs> uh, the day of darkness, um, Beric takes time to kind of revel in the victory uh, that he and his companions won. He spends many days enjoying the friendships that he cultivated on this great quest. So uh, some of the things he does is he attends all of Calliope's performances of I, I don't know what the what, the ballad of the Radiant Company. I don't know what you would what you she would call it. But anyways, yeah. he's he, he attends all of her performances at all the different taverns and ceases, and uh, he's one of her uh, biggest fans, and he's cheering in the back all the time. Um, he also takes time to uh, drink and swap battle stories and strategies with uh, Korok and Frederick. So if you can picture him 
sitting down with Korok and Frederick, who's probably like a bear or a, I don't know, donkey or something. <laughs> probably a donkey. Um, Human he hand. takes time. He takes time to uh, visit them. No, oh, no, Dane, you cut out. Uh oh. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. He takes time to visit the monkery, um, to meditate and pray with uh, Swift Eye and the peace of the inner sanctum there. Um, it's he finds it very, very what, Dane? Very what? <laughs> he, he meditated too hard. Meditate too hard. <laughs> he found inner peace. He's done with us now. Guys, guys, can you hear yes. me? Yes. Am I breaking yeah. up? No. Am I breaking up? No. no. I'm good right now? Yep. Okay. Don't I don't know if my like networks is spiking or what. All right. Um, so, yeah, goes to Mockery to, to meditate with Swift Eye. He accompanies Valorin to meetings with Twilina and Aurorus to kind of determine what steps are needed to rebuild Sisa and repair the damage by Mirabas. And then he also is right there with Base when trying to trying to uh, repair the temples of Pelor as well as rebuild other religious sites. And uh, once the scars of Pazubia have begun to, begun to heal, Beric feels it's time to return to that which was given to him. Feeling his time as the champion of Pelor is complete, he decides to make a pilgr pilgrimage back to the Temple of Pelor near Torciendo. Um, so he says goodbye to everybody, kind of um, doffs his shiny armor, his shields, his weapons, all, all those you know fancy things, and just wearing simple clothing and the clasp of the sun um, on his chest, he makes his way um, back to Torciendo on St. Cuthbert and he kind of makes this pilgrimage and along the way some of the things he does is he visits the resplendent keep and he gives whatever funds he didn't spend helping with the restoration uh, to Munder and the servants and then he also leaves his armor his weapons all of his magical items in the care of Munder uh, he goes back to Napsa and spends some time with good old Quinn Zuman and actually be becomes his uh, apprentice uh, farrier for a while uh, just because he feels guilty about how he treated the guy, and um, he spends a lot of time <laughs> spends a lot of time with Quinzo man, and in the end, kind of finds out that he still really doesn't like the guy. <laughs> but <laughs> he finds out that it, it, it's not because he's a bad person. He's he's difficult and kind of you know hard to work with. But it's mainly because Quinzo man is so genuine and just speaks his mind, which Beric just isn't used to. Um, which you should be working with, you know, um, Calliope and uh, <laughs> Valorant. <laughs> but <laughs> so he spent some time uh, as Quinzuman's apprentice uh, and, and has some experience as an apprentice farrier under his belt. And then he he, um, he makes his way to Torciendo, stops a lot of villages and small towns along the way, and kind of offers to offers to fix up their uh, religious sites. Um, like he did in Napsa, and that just makes him, you know, feel proud of what he does and gives hope to people. Um, and then the last anybody's heard from Beric is he set out east from Torciendo to the ancient temple of Pelor to return the Sun Shard back to its rightful master. Um, do you want me to elaborate any? Yeah, go ahead. So, um, as Beric kind of enters the, the Temple of Pelor, um, he's greeted by the same um, angelic uh, warrior who offered him the orb in the first place. Um, kind of welcomes as a friend. They, there's, a, there's a moment where there's a, an, an embrace, and they sit down at the table, and uh, Beric and this angel kind of relive the events of what's taken place in Pazubia, and um, also kind of share... Um, what this angel has seen Beric and the Radiant Company do and just, you know, recount the good that he has done in his life. Um, you know, and after, after some time and they've, they've enjoyed, you know, this time together, um, Beric offers the, um, Shard of the Sun to this individual and, and in to which case it it stands and his form kind of shimmers for a moment and it, it illuminates the room. Um, and there before Beric is Paylor himself. Um, and he says, uh, 
Beric, you are noble of heart and deed. Only you deserve to own this piece of the sun. If you do not wish to have it longer, I ask a simple request. That you take the place here as the relic's guardian for as long as the sun still rises. No, there may be a time that I may call upon you still, but for now, do you accept this offer to be the relic's guardian? Beric says, uh, Pillar Man, I got you. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> no, he says, I accept. <laughs> Fade to white. Uh, and then they do a sweet handshake. Uh, yeah. And then it kind of fades. It fades out as you kind of see uh, his armor that he had doffed is now uh, a slightly gold and shimmering, and he's now you know uh, well dressed. And it kind of fades away as they walk into the temple. That's me, Beric. Oh, Quinn Zooming. <laughs> oh, so Harm and Beric can be like guardian buddies. Guardian buddies. Uh, I can go next. Um, correct, correct. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't like write anything out, but I just kind of thought about uh, what Korak would probably do. Uh, yeah, doing it live. So, um, <laughs> at least for the first, I don't know, year plus, um, he would work to kind of restore uh, the trading background of his house and work with his uh, surviving siblings, uh, Lambert Cohen. Francesca and Radoff. Um, so kind of like bring that back up to speed. And then uh, once he's satisfied that it gets, you know, at least to, you know, off the ground, um, he'll leave uh, the trading company portion in the hands of his siblings. And then he retires to the Resplendent Keep and founds a uh, mercenary company, uh, the Resplendent Guardians. <sighs> and uh, focuses on training them and hires them out for um, basically just kind of defensive uh, missions. So like, you know, guarding trading ships, uh, you know, anybody that uh, is worried about being attacked from monsters or aggressive countries, just kind of living up to that the Guardian name. Um, he uh, never marries, never has any kids. Um, but probably one day in his, you know, middle period of his life, uh, he'll find somebody that, um, he brings on as like a protege that he raises up, you know, and teaches him all of his, uh, principles and, and everything. And, um, uh, that would be the person that he kind of passes on his, his things to. So, uh, yep, that's it. That's kind of what I had planned for, for Korak. I love it. I like it. It's not. Resplendent Guardians. <laughs> so, the first thing Calliope does is almost immediately start wearing an eye patch. <laughs> and she... Like you do. She when when she's telling the story of the Radiant Company and the battle, she includes the part where she dove in front of the Lightbringer in order to take a poison vampire arrow to the eye to spare his life so that he could use his power to defeat Miravas. During your performance you hear Barak Gaffa. <laughs> <laughs> And everybody else is like really into it and serious. <laughs> Barrett just busts out laughing. <laughs> so yeah, she wears an eye patch for the rest of her days. Um, she goes on this like tour and like playing the Battle of the Radiant Company of all of these cities, but quickly realizes that the stage doesn't do it for her anymore because she was on a world saving quest. So she starts doing the drugs and has like this crazy oh, rock no, star life uh, and he's rock what? bottom. <laughs> so then she's back in Sisa for a concert and like pass out an alley and gets shaken awake by this little like street urchin girl who's like, hey, hey, you all right? Um, 
And Calliope is like, yeah, 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 I'm fine. And then the street urchin runs off, and Calliope realizes that she's robbed her blind. <gasps> so she goes and she finds the street urchin, she takes her under her wing, and she realizes she's got to get her shit together. So she starts, she calls it the Radiant Academy. And it's an orphanage, but she doesn't bill it as an orphanage. It's the Radiant Academy, and she's going to start one in every city. And she's going to take in all the orphans, and she's going to train them. And she's going to have all these benefit concerts to raise money. And she's going to sort of sell it as, we have to raise the heroes of tomorrow. So the next time, because none of you would be alive if it weren't for the Radiant Company. So we have to raise the heroes of tomorrow. So next time someone like Miravas comes around, we're ready for him. So... She starts all these orphanages, these radiant academies, um, where, yeah, these street urchins get to come live and get trained to be heroes. And she will try to talk all the radiant company members into, like, being instructors at some point. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Does she ever get cleaned? Yes, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> no, she's still on hard drugs. <laughs> yes. Drug, drug <laughs> she, she's in the she's in the headmaster's quarter just sniffing cocaine. <laughs> no, she gets clean. She has like a wake up call and she realizes what am I doing with my life? That's what she looks like. Yeah. <laughs> she's still strung out. You need to eat something. <laughs> Twenty five gold to drink all night. Yeah, you guys made well. Man. Calliope made a killing that night. I yeah, bet. I think she shared it. Yeah, I think you you split it. Monker do, Monker do. Well, in addition to that, um, Swift Eye is definitely an instructor. Yeah, she has she has such a soft spot in her heart. She was an orphan once herself, but. In between learning to read and write with Ballerin at the library and stealing books from the oh, she, steal more books? she does steal more books. Yes. She, but she judges them strictly based on like, as she's still figuring out how to read, she just picks whichever one looks coolest in her infrared mm -hmm. cover. So she has like an odd collection of brown books. <laughs> and, like, <that. laughs> Which she's now, um, in between that and, and training the, uh, what did you call it? The Heroes of Tomorrow at the, the Radiant Heroes Academy. Of the, <laughs> <laughs> the Heroes of Tomorrow at the Radiant Academy. You could be a hero of tomorrow at the Radiant <laughs> Academy. I teach them, um, mostly how to run across walls and meditate. Nice. Life skills. <laughs> Running across yeah. walls 101. <laughs> Professor Swift. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've also devoted most of my time as I you now I've taken up an, a, a higher position at the monkery and and I devote a dear amount of time to rebuilding it and it needs to be recarved with the stone that's left of it. So I get the monks that are left together and we start punching away. <laughs> Mostly at night. <laughs> <laughs> because through through all of the things that Swift Eye has seen, no matter the meditation that she receives, she has just found that there are these nightmares that follow her. And this uh -oh. hole in her heart that she can't quite comprehend. So for a few months after after the uh night and darkness she removes her relic and goes back to being sightless for a while in hopes to find peace but the nightmares they don't they don't diminish <sighs> and she realizes she can't run from her past anymore she needs to face Susan and so recently she's been going on a a mad quest to find her parents and she has been sending monks all over, all over Pazubia just to see if they're still alive. She just needs to finally face the family that abandoned her. 
come to terms with her real name. And so far, she hasn't found them yet. But she's very passionate about it. And she's been writing, practicing her, her, her spelling by writing out a long letter to them in one, the day that she hopes to find them one day. She just hopes they're not dead. Oh, <laughs> nice. uh, I took a dick DM to do that. Uh, <laughs> you and Frederick need to take a journey together to Bummer Town. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. I like it. I just imagined all the angry people in CISA as the monks loudly punch out their new book. <laughs> three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Jackhammer's going off. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't need to sleep or eat anymore. That doesn't mean everybody else does. It. <laughs> no, I've, I've transcended. You also transcend too. Meet me at the academy for transcendental lessons. There's a lot of people that live around the monkery. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this whole block is not happy. The monkery. It's all just abandoned hovels now. <laughs> <laughs> that Amazing. is awesome. Um, well, sweet. Well, that that is that is awesome. Uh, it's a nice little way to kind of wrap up. Uh, plus, it gives me a whole bunch of ideas for some random one shots throughout. Uh, <laughs> as well as. Uh, you know some some fun hooks and some of which I've already started building. So if like we ever come back, Harry we'll Potter some... style adventure where we're all radiant academy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah. The, I I no no sneak peeks, but um but there's a lot of like parentheses whole campaign parentheses whole campaign. <laughs> whole campaign. <laughs> I was like oh shit. So oh, so very cool. Uh, again, I it was a lot of fun. So. Um, Plus, uh, I'm excited to to now to now play. Um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. So, yeah. awesome! Be fun to have an Abe character back. Yeah, um, I, I just figured I'd be Quinn Zuman. So, it'll be great. Uh, <laughs> or a little. Um, Little Tozu in life. Yeah, Tozu. Know. That's what I meant. I need to be an incompetent druid. <laughs> <laughs> he was by far one of my favorites. I'm super glad you guys decided to like somewhat befriend him. I was like, oh yeah. Well, I don't know that we decided to. He just he decided just he was coming off. with us. I mean, like, you guys had questions. He's like, well, I guess I could do that. Let's go follow this <laughs> tree. He seemed mostly harmless. Yeah, he mostly. killed. A, he killed a horse. He did. A horse. <laughs> he cut it, cut it in half. <laughs> and then angrily buried it. It's fine. I'm sure he said right. some kind of prayers. I don't know. Awesome. Uh, do we, An I, uh, Andy? I guess it's up to you. But do you do you want to switch and then you can uh, talk whatever you're doing? Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't switch. we? I, I've made a I've made a a server myself. So why don't we?